You know why I gotta have three bird meters? Because in the beginning, I, I was perfectly happy working on a dozy watt meter because it simply told me I was putting out more. But I like to be transparent and I like to set things up to where everybody can see everything that's going on all the time. So I was told that my dozy watt meter, no matter what, would always read fake, which isn't true. They're just not very accurate when they come out of the out of the factory. And you can make them within a five to ten percent margin pretty easily. And they'll read relatively true forever, unless they get dropped or somebody sticks their dick beaters in them or something. But I went out and I spent the money and I bought a bird meter. And then the next big comment was, well, the reason his watt meter is showing so much power is because He's got that peak kit all messed up. And he never shows anything in average, so I go on and get the second meter. And then the poke the hole in the theory was, well, the reason his watt meter is showing so much power is because he's got a screwed up dummy load and he never shows any of the reflect power. <laughs> and then the next poke a hole in the theory was, well, you know, the reason his watt meter shows so much power is because he never shows the reflect going into the amplifier. I embrace those kind of comments because all they have done is set the gold standard for benches. If you go around the radio community today and look at all the other YouTube channels, You'll find that most people have a set of configurated meters just like this. And there's a reason I don't have a fancy little metal box and the line section sitting off of some other place. You guys have to see everything that's around them and everything that's attached to them. And have to know where every wire goes, like this coupler. Whole YouTube video about getting the new measuring tools over here. Okay. Now this one piece of coax runs right across the length of the workbench. It runs right up. And there's a reason I gotta have all this stuff showing. Those comments make me stronger, and they only add credence to what I have to say. So I left the comments open intentionally, kind of as a bait and troll thing, because I'm open to other people's opinions. I like criticism. I think it's cute. I think it's fun, and I'm not opposed to it, because that's how we all learn. There's this gentleman, uh, Mark. 19960. Yes, the wire is likely too small, but there's other factors in play besides the wire. I know, Mark, but I'm grateful for the comment. Please don't take this as me picking on you or putting you down or anything, because that's not the case. <sighs> what was the value of the inductor before and after? It's irrelevant, and I'll explain to you why in a minute. Its job is to keep RF off the power rails. But when you remove all but one turn, the value changed quite substantially. Here's a couple reasons for the heating. And then he goes on to uh, defend his statement, which I think is great. You don't get to be in this business without being able to be able to listen to other people's opinions. Okay. So, I read your statement, and you're right. The extra turn and a half through the ferrite will make a huge inductor difference. But that's not what throws the RF off the wire. Primarily, it's the capacitance back here on the power strip and back here on the power strip that throws the circuit out of resonance. We're not going to mention how there's not that much RF on the back of the transformer, but, but, I digress, the reason we use capacitance is to throw the resonance of the whole positive output circuit way, way like 501. The RF doesn't want to go this way. The ferrite helps. It does. It really does. It's debatable how much that makes a huge difference or not, but it helps. So, I mean, we put chokes on stuff going to ground all over the box. 
without having any extra capacitance added to it. But on the positive rail, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 104 disc capacitors. That's a lot of capacitance coupling to ground. So the RF isn't going to want to go this way. And it's truly a heating issue. It is. Because believe me when I tell you, that was one of the things I considered when I started doing, if we go back and we look at some of my older videos, uh, the 2x8 to the max, where I took ground braid and I ran it in and out through like four or five, I don't even remember how many ferrite beads, and I, I built these really cool trick chokes. And I started pulling those chokes off and measuring the unihenry difference in the inductor and watch what was going on, and I got down to where I just had the, the freaking braid going through one wire and going back down. That whole box was an experiment to see what happened if I pulled all of the restrictions out of the cabinet, everything that I thought was inadequate, like too small a power wire going here and too small a power wire here, and what happens, it was a huge scientific experiment. That, that was just a lab project, that box. I, I read all of this stuff, and I learned it all and measured it all and looked at it all and I can tell you right now first off we're on the 2x scale again let's go over here 2x scale um, the only thing that's different is I don't have the power supply on down here which will make a difference in about three and a half four watts worth of drive so okay there's our drive oh shit Here's our drive. One, 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 one. Hello. Okay. Here's our output bar. Hello. Same and same. All right. Let's go over here and look at our choke. Um, what choke? There it is. Oh, one, two, 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 one, two. Uh, one, two, 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 one, two. What it sees heating is the wire coming out of the transformer. You'll see that there's no temperature difference between ferrite A and ferrite B. Hello, one, 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 When this thing is in operation, the hottest thing in here is the three-turn inductor wire that is, um, where are the strippers here? Let's gauge this stuff real quick for fun. Because here is, let's go down here in the trash. piece of the wire that come out of here and it is 18 gauge 18 gauge is too small bottom line and it's causing a restriction heat means resistance and if there's so much RF field that's on the back of this transformer that it is being coupled and induced onto this wire and somehow it's magically getting back to the power rail that's got like 15 104 disc capacitors on it we have a whole lot of other issues going on. But Mark and uh, Lee, I appreciate your guys' comments. And once again, thank you. It was a good topic, and it was something that we needed to address right away. So anyhow, I'm going to button this box up. I'm done with it. It's going to hell out of here, and it's going back home. It's going to be his backup box again. So that note, gentlemen, I'll see you. And I appreciate every single one of you guys. Have a great afternoon. Have a good Easter. We'll see you. Click, click, click.